Oh, hey there, I didn't see you. So as you can tell, I'm a little bit of a gamer. You could say I am a pro gamer. But this is my situation when it comes to gaming right now. And you maybe think, what's the issue? I mean, it's not half bad, right? But the issue is, that is actually my dining room table. Every time I want to eat, I have to get everything down, prepare my food, sit down and eat. And if I want to have a nice gaming session afterwards, I have to build everything up again. So the reason I don't have a desk is I recently moved to Switzerland out of professional reasons. Flats here are kind of expensive. Let's be honest, everything is expensive. So I've gone for a smaller apartment here. This is my only solution right now for being able to game a bit. Because I live in a high-rise building, one of my walls is basically just glass window and I don't like putting stuff in front of that. So I decided to build my gaming setup into my cupboard because who needs clothing, right? But now, excuse me, I have some important work to do. Six hours later. Well, let me show you the place where we're going to install that and let's start building. This is my beefy big wardrobe. It's about four meters in size. I already plan to install that, but I'm not living here for that long. So I would say let's clear it out, take some measurements and start planning. Um, if you are wondering what that is, that is my way of filing paperwork. Of course, this will change after the build is finished. What? I said after I finish it. So my idea with this build is, I want to have a desk space in here. But of course, if you imagine you're sitting here, wait a second, got my gaming chair. So as you imagine, if you're sitting here, the desk is kind of narrow. I want to extend it a little bit, but because this is a sliding door, I can't just have it sticking out or anything. I am actually thinking about an hinge mechanism here. Then the second thing is, where should the monitor go? I want to have like a little desk space for notes and whatever. So I thought, why not use this and hang it? The plan is to put in a plate that extends with a hinge mechanism and there will be a little surprise for you at the end. So the next thing to do would be taking some measurement. When I walked down into my workspace to look for the hinges, I found those old drawer sliders from another project. And I thought that's a better solution. As you can see, I started to put in my computer. Of course, because I have a setup like this, there is no power button to press anymore. I got one of these beautiful 
stainless steel switches. So the important thing you have to remember is that you need a tactile switch, not the one that like presses down, stays in and you press it again to come out because that will actually reboot your computer endlessly. I got one with an LED ring, so it glows when my computer is on, of course. As you can see, we got four pins here. That is why I got a cable with four are done. That is why I got a cable with four core cables. So we can use one cable instead of two coming from the motherboard. On your motherboard, you have a little pin that is called power. And the other one is called power LED. This is too much power for one person. We have to connect those two, get them down here and install our switch. So these are our two pin connectors. Because I run four core wire, I can cut them down pretty short. So I have a white wire running from the motherboard. We just go ahead and cut our cables at different lengths for every cable. Like that. We take off the isolation of the white cable. And I will divide it by white and blue for power and then purple and this what is this? Light green for LED. Because this is a connection where there will be no force applied. I will not do any nodding, twisting or anything. If you like that, just watch some videos of 5 minutes craft. Cable 1 done. So, as you can see, there is no way those two points are touching. So that is why it is a safe soldering technique if you don't have moisture whatsoever. So we can now apply one shrink wrap over the whole thing or when we have our second one, because my two connectors are side by side, we can have one going over the whole cable. And just as easy as that, the soldering job is done. Let's add some isolation, get to installing the switch. The good thing about this particular soldering job is you basically can't mess it up because if the contacts touch, it will not shorten your computer. It will just simply shut it down. I want to explain really quickly how these switches work. This one is a five pin because it has an internal LED and you basically have the outer two for your LEDs, plus minus. And then you have these three pins in the middle. So there is this one, it's called C1. There is where one of your cable, preferably the one labeled plus on your motherboard, goes in. And then you have NO1 and NO2. So the difference between these is very important because NO1 will get activated whenever you press the button. NO2 will get deactivated whenever you press the button. So if you put your computer on NO2, it will restart constantly, basically. We want to solder onto NO1. So after the soldering is done, let's quickly test if everything works. And it lights up. The computer starts. Let's test reset. Works as well. Great. Let's start drilling. Okay, it did not chip out that much. So I think our burr will cover that. So I'm using self gluing edges. I never used this before, to be honest. I am used to the ones that you have to iron on, but I think we can give it a try. Don't re-glue them if you have to correct, because it will give bumps and stuff like that. So I'm looking for the nicer edge. It's up here. You can always sand it a bit, touch it and try to already meet the edge on top. Don't bend it to like here to close corners because it will snap. So here I will actually cut it right at the corner instead of bending it around because yeah, that could mess up the end. We have a little radius here. I can't do anything about that. So let's measure out a bit and go from the inner corner to the outer. So we don't have to bend it in here. Best thing, of course, if you don't have to cut out the part like I did, is to get the edges done in your department store. 
because they will actually have a machine for that and you can have a nice like bevel on top. When cutting the access, use a very sharp knife, but be aware of your fingers so you don't cut yourself. I removed the screen, so the next thing is a bit of cable management using zip ties. I did most of the cable management, so now it's satisfying snap time. So, the finishing touch, self-adhesing foil, self-adhesing sticker, foil, surface, you got what I mean, right? So you're probably thinking, why did he bother to put on like these edge pieces when he put this on it anyways? The thing is, when you don't put them on, you have a rough surface like raw wood here. And this material doesn't like to stick to that. And if, and you have to correct, which you sometimes have to get the bubbles out, you will actually tear out little wood pieces and place them down somewhere else and everything just gets messed up. So out of my experience, it's the best to have a really flat edge, a sharp edge, and then put the foil on it. So that's why I wasn't concerned about drawing on it or having the edge like chip out a little bit while cutting. This wood isn't that great to cut at home. I mean, if you get it out of the uh, department store pre-cut, even there, like all these little chips on the top side here, are from pre-cutting with like professional sauce actually. Let's get it out and finish it up, get some cable channels installed, get all the electrical work done and we're ready. So there you have it, my closet PC build. I promised you something special for the end. Here it is. My memory sticks are actually showing how much memory I use currently in my computer by light. If you want to learn how to do that, watch my other video where I explain you exactly that. And other than that, see you later, guys.